In this video, we're learning about meiosis and genetic variation. So we'll cover the functions of meiosis, and then also how meiosis introduces genetic variation. Starting with the functions of meiosis, meiosis is a special type of cell division, and its main purpose is to produce four genetically different haploid cells. And what haploid means is that they contain half the number of chromosomes compared to a typical body cell. These haploid cells are called gametes, or sometimes sex cells, and they're essential for sexual reproduction. In humans, the gametes are egg cells and sperm cells, and we show that they're haploid by writing a lowercase n next to them. Let's take a quick look at why this function of producing gametes is so important. When these gametes fuse during fertilization, they form a diploid zygote which contains the full number of chromosomes, and we show this with a 2n. The zygote can then develop into a new organism, carrying a mix of genetic material from both parents. Another key function of meiosis is to introduce genetic variation, which is essential for natural selection, a mechanism that allows the evolution of species over time. This is partly because each parent has different versions of certain genes and we call these different versions alleles. And importantly, these alleles then get randomly sorted into the gametes produced by each parent. So overall, there's a lot of variation in the gametes each parent produces. As a result, the combination of alleles that each offspring gets from each parent will be pretty random, depending on which sperm cell fertilizes which egg cell. This random fertilization of gametes means that, apart from identical twins, all offspring have a unique combination of alleles. It's this genetic diversity that means populations can adapt to changing environments over time, and this is absolutely essential for the evolution of species. Next, let's cover how meiosis also introduces genetic variation into the gametes via two different processes, crossing over and independent segregation. Crossing over, which is sometimes called recombination, happens during prophase one. To recap, during this stage of meiosis, homologous chromosomes pair up in the cell. This forms a structure called a bivalent, and the chromatids of the two homologous chromosomes twist around each other to form a chiasmata. To lay this out step by step, a homologous pair of chromosomes would be a paternal chromosome from your father and a maternal chromosome from your mother. These would then pair up and form a bivalent, and their chromatids would twist around each other, forming a chiasma. And chiasmata is just the word for multiple chiasma. Then at these chiasmata, sections of DNA are exchanged between the homologous chromosomes in the bivalent, shuffling the alleles between them, and meaning that an allele that was originally on the paternal chromosome might end up on a maternal chromosome instead. After exchanging genetic material during prophase 1, Variation is also introduced during anaphase 1, where the homologous chromosome pairs in the bivalent separate, and they carry different combinations of alleles into the new cells that they'll eventually form. Taken together, these processes mean that by the end of meiosis, we have four genetically different gametes. But remember, this actually happens to 23 pairs of chromosomes instead of just the one pair we've shown here, and this adds a lot of genetic diversity to the offspring that can be produced by these gametes. Next, let's look at independent segregation, which is another way genetic variation is introduced to the gametes formed during meiosis. You might also hear it referred to as random assortment, though. It happens during metaphase 1, when the pairs of homologous chromosomes in their bivalents line up along the equator of the cell like this. The orientation of each pair is random, so the maternal and paternal chromosomes may be on either side of the equator. So, for instance, Instead of arranging like in our cell on the left during metaphase 1, they might arrange like this instead. To prove the point, if we look at the final gametes produced from the first random arrangement, we can see they're different to the gametes produced from the second random arrangement. So, a different combination of maternal and paternal chromosomes end up in the gametes in each scenario. If you imagine this happening with 23 pairs instead of just the two we're showing here, it's easy to see how this introduces a lot of genetic variation. Overall, 
If we take both independent segregation and crossing over into account, it means one individual can produce gametes with really high genetic variation, or in other words, their gametes are all genetically different from each other. And then on top of that, random fertilization of these gametes afterwards means the genetic variation of offspring that can be produced is absolutely massive. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.